Well, hello, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott. I'm the head trader and founder of Wealth Press. Today is October 28th. It's 24 hours before my 50th birthday. I don't know if I should be happy or if I should be crying. <laughs> boy, oh boy, oh boy. I, I, I'm going to tell you, folks, it came fast. It came fast. I, I remember being 30. It was just like yesterday, and I'm going to be 50 years old tomorrow or 50 years young, depending on how you look at it. But if you got feed, uh, comments, feedback, anything for me, wishes, good wishes, bad wishes, post below or send me an email at supportedmarketgeeks.com. I'd love to hear from you, especially around my birthday time. It would make me happy. Now, let's talk about global economy. Let's talk about stocks. Let's get into it because the market's down. The Dow's down about 500 points overnight. And it's mostly due to COVID-19 and election uncertainty. So let's start there and we'll kind of narrow down our focus from there so global shares mostly lower countries tighten precautions COVID-19 told you so it's going to be an ugly winter folks optimism that the pandemic may have been brought somewhat under control has dissipated as infections continue to rise in Europe U.S. and other parts of the world confidence people are not confident about the economy because of the COVID-19 it's just that simple because we've got a flu season we've got a COVID-19 season really coming up in the next month three weeks to a month because the winter is right around the corner and we've got nothing and the government hasn't given us any aid caution continues to hang over markets governments have begun to impose restrictions on businesses and other activities to help curb surging infections does that sound like february to you it's like groundhog day right it's like we're back in february but that's really important because we can take advantage of the same stocks that rallied in February or fade the same type of stocks that um, fell through the sky or fell from the sky in February. The um, That could choke off improvement seen this summer. That's what I was talking about. It looks like we're erasing all the positive. Fresh pandemic precautions are also drawing a public backlash despite spiking levels of illnesses in European countries. It ain't pretty, folks. Investors are clamoring for Congress to deliver more virus relief for the U.S. economy. We really need it right now, but they're increasingly acknowledging it won't happen anytime soon. Hey, election's still not here, and I still think Trump has a Trump card in his pocket. So let's see if he'll, if, if that's going to be it, because that'll go a long way. That will go a long way, especially right now. Wall Street's caution is also apparent in how it's reacting to corporate profits. It's being a little cautious. Though the first two weeks were reasonable, the expectations over a year, this is, remember, these expectations have been beaten down. We're better than expected, but we're still down about 18 to 19% from a year ago on 2.5% lower revenue. That's the target. By the end of this week, today is Wednesday, by Friday, we should have about half of the S&P, roughly half of the S&P, maybe a little less, maybe about 40% of the S&P. It'll give us a better understanding of where we stand right now. But um, they're expecting really, really better numbers, like much, much better numbers next quarter, but we're still too early in the game. And and if you look, if you look at the uh, if you look at the numbers that are coming out, some are good, some are bad, but honestly, the truth to God is they have been un the revisions have had more than two quarters to revise the earnings lower. So you're looking at a moving target. You're looking at a number that's revised lower, and then you're looking for an actual number to be in line with that. Well, the fact that 75% of numbers are above that is just telling us that we have been knocked down quite a bit. Now, we've got GDP tomorrow, and it's really rare to see huge, huge moves before the GDP unless there's something known or unless that unless we are in the type of environment we're in right now where we've got an election coming up in less than a week or about a week and we don't have any aid and we, we, we're we kind of like in between a rock and a hard place right now. We've got international trade and goods coming out. We had consumer confidence come out yesterday. The number was better than expected. It was it was consensus was actually it was it was slightly worse than expected, but it was fair. It wasn't um, it wasn't too bad. Uh, it wasn't too bad the actual number was 109 it was okay it was slightly better than the range but again 30 points below where it was before the virus hit and that's the major issue that's the major issue and also if you look at jobless claims that are coming tomorrow 
we were like at about a million when COVID hit around February, March, we're still around 750,000. Not much has changed. It's moving down. Yes, it is, but it's not like a 200,000. It's still closer to a million than it is at 200. We went from the best economy in 50 years, literally in 40 to 50 years, to the worst economy since the 20s. So it's bad. Remember, tomorrow's the big report. We're having a GDP. I would not be putting on big positions. I would not be making big decisions. I wouldn't be a hero ahead of the GDP. It's going to be the biggest report of the quarter. It's going to have a substantial reflection on consumer sentiment and consumer confidence. Consumer confidence is still mixed. Don't exp don't hold your breath for a major report and don't hold your breath for jobless claims. Pending home sales, on the other hand, and new home sales have been off the rock. Let me, let's look at the, the one that happened on Monday. That's why anything relating to home sales has been really, really good. 959, not bad, not bad. I mean, not bad at all, especially in light of this economy. Prior revised to 994, we're now at 959. That's some pretty strong home sales. And then we have, where is the, the other one that's coming out? God, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. Pending home sales. Here we go. Let's see what the... I know that home sales here in this area have been like crazy, like crazy. See, I think the consensus is going to be really strong. I don't think it's going to be negative. I don't think it's going to be um, a great surge underway for resales. Yeah. Signaling the great surge underway. Yeah. So I think the number is going to be positive. I, th I don't think you're going to see a negative number. I think you're going to see something around three and a half to 6% positive. I really do. I think the numbers are going to be good. But let's look at the stock market. Remember I showed you this, this triangle? Well, it's not looking pretty. We're now below the 50-day moving average on the NASDAQ 100. If you look at the SPY, I don't know why this keeps sticking up. Look at this. We're way below the triangle, that symmetrical triangle, and we're now below the moving average. And even the Russell, let's see how much the Russell is down before the open. Oh, Russell's not leading. Even the Russell is slightly below the 50-day line. Not as bad as the other uh, as the other two, but it's still pretty bad. I mean, look at this. It's like touching the 50-day line, where the S and P is way below it, and QQQ is way, way, way. Not not way, but it's below it as well, folks. This is not a time to be a hero. Now, I wanted to show you something. Look at this headline. Sony's profits rise as pandemic has people playing games. Again, doesn't that remind you of February and March? Folks, we're going to be entering the same type of stay-at-home environment that we've seen for a very long time. It's going to re, re um, it's going to become very popular once again. Now, in light of that, I wanted to show you something. Look at crude oil prices. $41 a barrel is what frackers pay in America to process crude oil. That means they are losing money right now. And the energy market is the worst sector, just like it's been for the last seven months. Nothing has changed. None of the bottom fishers have been rewarded. Bottom fish, bottom, yeah, bottom fishers. Look at that. We just broke the low that we had here, and it looks like we're going towards the bottom. Do you like energies? I don't. Look at this stock, Avista Corp. All right, what did they do? Let's take a look. It's an energy company, pr production, transmission, distribution of energy, as well as energy-related businesses. Mm -mm. Electric service cons customers and natural gas customers. One-year return, 27% negative. Three-year return, 33% negative. Expectation growth versus previous quarter, down 63%. Growth versus previous year, down 31%. And, and insult to injury, look at this trend. <laughs> this, is, this is bad. So right now, this stock is seeing a 4x4 four four pattern. That's when a stock makes a 50-day low or a 40-day low, then tr rallies for four days and then breaks down again, which is very typical. You'll see these breakdown levels. So I would sell this stock around 34 30 yeah, right, right, 34, 30 level. And I would cover it if it trades above the 35, 50 level. So we want to sell it right here, 34, 30. And we want to cover it if it goes against us at about the 35, 50, 35, 60 level. This is a dog with fleas, ticker symbol AVA. 
I mean, look at this thing. Let's look at longer term. I mean, look at this. That's not pretty. By the way, um, let me take a look at something real quick here. Yep, it's a Russell 2000 stock. So again, it's it's not pretty right now. This company is not even a large cap tech. It's a small, a large cap uh, energy company. It's a, it's a medium cap or a smaller cap energy company. So right now, the big ones like Exxon. I mean, look at this. Look at uh, Mobil here. I'm still thinking they're two separate companies. I've been doing this for a while. Look at this. I mean, look at this. They're terrible. At least this one just broke down. And at least this one rallied the last three days. So you can catch it right off of the 50-day line. See, look at this. Notice when it's in a strong downtrend. Let me, yeah. Uh, look at this. Every time it hits the 50-day line, it goes south. Look at that. Every time when it's in a strong downtrend. And I think it's going to go down again and take out this low. Now, folks, don't go anywhere. I've got something big, 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 huge for you today. Now, how would you like to score up to uh, 10000 $400 every single month on your average size retirement account. Wouldn't that be amazing? Who wouldn't like an extra $10,400 every month? Thanks to a loophole that's used by trading legends like Warren Buffett, it's finally, finally possible. I'm not kidding. Former hedge fund manager Tom Busby discovered a little known strategy to grab winners, folks like clockwork. I mean like clockwork. And Tom historically is right four out of five times. He is a legend, all right? The best part, you don't have to own any stocks and you don't have to have millions or even hundreds of thousands of dollars to use this. $10,400 every single month on an average size retirement account. Do yourself a favor. Click on the link below to see Tom's latest discovery. Do it now. No, no owning any stocks. Don't have to have millions. Average size retirement account is good. And the best part, $10,400 every single month. Don't miss out. Talk soon. Bye.